what I'm going to do is, let's just grab everything here. I'm going to copy it. Okay. In fact, I'm just going to create a whole new file. And now the first thing I'm going to do is open up my library, Command L or Control L, say new symbol, and create, um, give it the graphic behavior. Let's just name it Walk Cycle, and click OK. Now, as you can see, we are inside the Walk Cycle symbol we just created. We're looking at frame one inside this symbol. I'm going to hit Command V, which is the, your basic paste command. Um, 640 by 480, 24 frames per second, all good. So now we have um, our character uh, as already converted to symbols. Okay, but what I want to do is have everything on different layers. So I've selected everything. I've right-clicked over it, and this handy feature, distribute to layers, is right here in the uh, pop-up uh, context menu. I'm going to select that, and you can see. Not only has Flash thrown them all into um, their own individual layers, but they've, uh, Flash has also named each layer. And how did it know that? Well, it's taking the, the name of the actual symbol itself. So you can see here I've clicked on the body, or here we go, and the body's name is top, and so the layer name is top. Uh, it's a nice shortcut because you're killing two birds with one stone there. Now the first step you want to do with, uh, as far as doing a walk cycle is get her in the right starting position. Okay. So I'm going to start uh, by editing the center point. So I'm grabbing, using the free transform tool, I'm selecting each symbol and I want it to hinge here. So I'm moving this white dot which is your center point. As you can see if it's in the middle it's going to hinge based on where that center point is. I'm going to move it up here and now it's going to hinge where I want it to. So that's going to work out better. There. Now, these layers that contain the leg over here on the right, or her left leg, I'm going to shut off for now. I don't even want to look at them. Okay. And let's also view rulers. Draw ourselves a little guide here. Okay, view guides and lock that guide so it can't be inadvertently moved. Good. Okay. So now what I want to do is start my animation. Um, of just this leg uh, moving backwards. I'm going to create a keyframe. Doesn't matter exactly where, just a few frames down will do. Since this foot needs to just move along this line, I'm just going to uh, use the arrow key to slide it back. Now here, I'm going to hold down Shift, select both of these symbols. As you can see, the center point, when you have multiple symbols selected, is in the middle. Okay, I'm going to move it up here, where I want it to hinge, and move the leg this way. Okay. If I go back and just select individual symbols, you can see my center point. Flash will remember my um, center point when where I edit, originally edited it. Okay, so now let's go select all these frames across these three layers that contain our leg. I'm going to right click and say create classic tween. And now this is where the leg will start to um, uh, start to lift up. Um, and I usually keyframe this, so I'm going to select the next frame, hit F6 to apply multiple keyframes. Let's select everything, hinge, rotate, about, to about right there. But then I'm going to select the lower half, including the foot, move the center point to about the knee. Okay, there. And that might be a little bit too much movement, so I'm going to select the keyframes, move them out of frame, and let's apply uh, a classic tween. And now this is where the front leg starts to come forward. So let's create uh, some keyframes a little bit further down the timeline. They're all selected. Let's hinge it at the waist. Move the leg forward. Grab the lower half of the leg, hinge. Move it back a little bit. Now I'm creating um, a classic tween again. Okay, you can sort of see that motion. I'm not worrying about this yet. We can always tweak that later, and I'll show you how. I want to just get the overall motion first. Now here's where the leg will um, kick in front of the body. So uh, let's hinge it at the um, waist again, move it up a little bit. Select the lower half, hinge, and make it straighten out. 
classic tween. Now, what we want to do is create um, a short cycle, okay, of the foot uh, sliding back, coming forward, and then stepping down. All right, so we're almost there. We just need a couple more frames. So what I'm going to do is actually straight lengthen this out a little bit. Move it a little bit that way. Bend it at the knee just a little bit. I think that's going to work. Let's go to Control. Let's go to Loop Playback. Just see how that looks. Okay, good enough. Now, like I said, I wanted to go back and tweak a few things. So we can see the knee gets a little bit separated here. Or I should say the upper and lower leg gets separated. So um, I'm going to select these frames in here uh, on the uh, layers that contain the upper and lower leg and hit F6, which converts them to keyframes. And now um, let's do it also for the foot because I'll be moving that as well. So let's go here. This frame is where it starts to pull away, selecting those and just using the arrow keys to nudge them into a better uh, position. Here's where I, I have the biggest shortcut of all. Okay, we've got one leg working. There's no need to animate the second leg from scratch. I've selected the entire leg animation by just clicking and dragging. See? And I'm going to right click over this. And I'm going to select copy frames. It's different from just copy. You have to select copy frames. Uh, now let's forget about the original leg that we had here. Okay, Leave those hidden for now. I'm going to create a layer above them. I'm going to select the entire range of empty frames in here. I'm going to right click and select paste frames. All right, so now we have the same exact leg as up here copied to here, but it's behind it. Now let's lock all these layers and then unlock the newly pasted layers containing the leg that we just animated. Now edit multiple frames is down here near the onion skin tool. Uh, the playhead has these brackets um, to the left and right of it. Just make sure the brackets span all of your frames and make sure everything else is locked except for the newly pasted uh, leg. Click on the stage. Command A, select all. Now let's use the arrow keys and nudge this over. Okay, and actually let's nudge it up a little bit as well. And while we're at it, actually click directly on one of the leg symbols. Yeah, but whatever, 20%. Alright. All this does is just darken um, the leg a little bit, which pushes it a little bit further into the background. Okay. So now the next problem we have here is obviously this is not a natural looking walk cycle. So the easy way to do this again is to make sure that everything's converted to keyframes. We can even uh, remove the tween here. So now what we want to do, here's the trick. Select the first half of this animation of just this second leg. Once it's selected, click and drag. Carefully place it after the second half of the animation. Okay, so you should your timeline should now look like this. Okay. Now select this range of empty frames across these three layers. Okay, just these frames should be selected. Right click over it. Select remove frames. I'm going to go back and delete these frame, uh, layers that contained her original leg, we do not need them anymore. And plus we've made this file a bit more efficient because we've reused these symbols and of course this animation. So we've actually cut the production in half and decreased file size if that was ever a concern. So now we go back to scene one and there's nothing on the main timeline because we worked entirely within this walk cycle symbol. So let's drag it to the stage and let's change our background color. Okay, so now how do we make the character walk across the scene? Very easy. Frame one, okay, it's a graphic symbol as you can see here. It's set to loop. I'm going to create another keyframe over here. And let's just slide her across and then create a tween and play it back. Done.